So number one, choose a proper environment. Dress up professionally using your common sense. Number three, be prepared. Bring the necessary tools. All right, what are your tools? Some product brochures, if you don't have the product itself. Do you need the product to be successful in this business? No, until today, I've never used a product when I do a plan. And I've been doing this business for three years. I do not carry the product. Why? Because it cannot be duplicated to somebody who hasn't qualified for his coin watch or watch, you understand? So he'll say, partner, I can't go out. Why? I don't have a product. Can I borrow yours? And you have already lent yours out. He's stuck. So I never show the product. Is our product easy to explain? Round and gold. You got the brochure. Enough. Get some paper. Get a cheap pen. Why cheap pen? Because I lost a lot of expensive pens doing plans. So your Mont Blanc you keep in your pocket and you take out your, you know, your pilot and you just write. Okay, some of you are very comfortable with PowerPoint presentations. But be very careful when you use it. When you're going to, an, to, a, to a province or a small village somewhere where there's a housewife sitting down, I would use two pieces of paper and a pen. Why? Because you have to connect with that person. If you start pressing buttons and something flashes on a wall, she freaks out. You know what's the first thing running through her mind? I can't do this. It cannot be duplicated. But if I take two pieces of paper and just scribble, flip the brochure, hey, I can do this. So remember, every action you take, you must always think of duplication. Can this be duplicated? Does everyone have a coin to show? Does everyone have a 12,000 laptop to do PowerPoint? Maybe not. Right? So I'm a firm believer of two A4 papers and a cheap pen. Effective duplication. But sometimes when you do a professional presentation to a bunch of IT specialists or to a bunch of bank managers, you can resort to your more effective presentation. Because that's their culture. So you've got to be very sensitive to the prospect. His level of understanding, his level of understanding of this whole concept. Then you go in for your plan. All right? Now, some organizations have got this info packs, all right, which you can leave behind with the prospect. Or you can ask them to revert back to the website. That's a one on one. Okay? Now, make your plan short and sweet. I heard people, Patman, I just finished a plan. I said, Really? How long? Six hours, man. It was one of the toughest plans. Now, you know what message you're sending when you do a plan for six hours? You've got nothing better to do today than to spend six hours with somebody. And the guy, after 40 minutes, is switched off. He's thinking of his cat at home, his wife, you know, someone. Has, you, you understand? The attention span of a human being is 20 minutes. And you go six hours? You cannot. All right? So keep your plan short and sweet. Now, what I do, and this is a trade secret of a networker, is right after the plan, Right? And spend about 15 minutes talking. I said, listen, Mohan, I have to go. I have another appointment right after this. But thanks for your time. Remember, we have a meeting in a couple of days. I'll give you a call to confirm the time. Thanks a lot. Right? This is the info pack. You can read through it or revert back to our website. Then I leave. Do you have an appointment? Maybe not. You go back home and stare at the ceiling. Or go back home and sharpen your skills. Read a book. You understand? You must always be busy. If you speak to my brother, Ranjit, and myself, whenever you call us, even though at 6 in the morning, we automatically answer the phone like we are wide awake. Yes, Suresh, yeah, what's up? Tell me, where? Today, 6 o'clock? Done, I'll be there. And then we go back to sleep. See, ne networkers are always on standby. Posture. These are trade secrets, okay? So don't call me at 6, all right? Now, you, you understand? That's basically how it works, on a one-on-one, -on -one. okay? Then you got home meetings, which Joe Fabregas has taught me to be one of the most effective concepts. Now, with our founding directors, Japa is the specialist. Even Vijay, super specialist at a one-on-one. -on -one. Kurt and Joe are more the group meetings. All right? Now, Joe has taught me that home meetings are very powerful. Why? Because when you invite somebody to your home, they are comfortable. All right? They are comfortable coming to your house on a Sunday evening, sitting around and listening to you talk for 40 minutes. All right? They bring their, husband and they bring their wife or husband and they come and sit down. You understand? All right, now, home meetings, there are certain rules. Number one, don't invite 45 people to your house. All right? Your neighbors will think you're running some kind of, you know, fanatic organization. 
So what you do is you invite maybe five to eight people based on your seating capacity of your hall. Right now, do not cook 25 dishes. Full-fledged, nine-course meal for the people. You know why? Where will their focus be the whole time? Ah, I can't wait to have dinner, can I? You understand? So, cookies, cake, and tea or cold drinks. Now, with cold drinks, this is proven. I experience it. Make sure there are no ice cubes. Why? Because there will be one guy sitting there who loves playing with his ice cubes. So, he'll be doing this with his glass, you know. And this, grr, grr, the sound. And then some people put the ice cube in their mouth and start biting it. And it starts to irritate the guy next to him, you understand? Then the couples do weirder things, you know, you understand? All right? So ice cubes, no. So make sure there's a strainer just to pour cold drinks, cookies, cake. Now be equipped in your house. Have a whiteboard. You should have a whiteboard if you're a networker. Always in your car with a tripod. That's your investment. Because you never know when there's a need for you to set it up and do a plan on the street or in some fair or something like that. So have a whiteboard and do the plan. Okay? Everyone is comfortable, they're sitting down, make it short and sweet, and after that, have a meeting after the meeting discussion. As simple as that. That's your home meeting. All right? Now finally, you've got meetings where you invite people to an official venue of Gold Quest, OV team, like the office or hotel. Number one, when you invite them to be there at 6.30, what time should you be there? 6 o'clock. Please don't make your prospects wait downstairs. Who are you waiting for? I'm waiting for Uma. She hasn't come. You, know. you understand? You be there early. Now, for that moment, when your prospect comes to the venue, he is king. You are the humble servant. Because as far as he's concerned, hey, 40 minutes of my time is very valuable. The last thing you do is invite your prospects. Hello, you wait here. And then you go outside and chit-chat with your friends. He's waiting there, under, you know, not doing anything. You understand? So you make sure you treat him well as a guest. All right? Satya, thank you for coming. All right? Can you have a seat? All right? Can, you, can I get you a glass of water? Now, how many of you actually feel like serving a glass of water to somebody? Why not? He came to your place. That means he's your guest. Somebody comes to your house, would you give a glass of water? Serve him a glass of water. Now, always introduce your prospects to your seniors, your leaders, and your leaders will know what to say. Satya, by the way, you know, this is uh, Suresh. By the way, this is Anand. By the way, this is Muniz. Muniz will know what to say, don't worry. You understand? Alright? So always introduce them readers. Now, take them into the room. Make them sit down. Do you sit with them? Yes. If there's space in the room, you sit next to them. And what? SMS your girlfriend. No. Focus on the presentation. Have you heard the presentation before? Yes. 6,000 times. Doesn't matter. Hear it for the 6,001 time. Okay, now when you feel your prospect is being a bit distracted, all right, you bring him back to focus. I see Suresh staring at the ceiling. I said, Suresh, by the way, this is a really important point. Okay, now notes. You take notes. And you offer your prospect a piece of paper and a pen if he doesn't have it. And he will start taking notes. That's crucial. He's going to duplicate what you do. And he's going to say, well, this guy is serious. He's sitting here with me and taking notes. Wow, this is very good. He loses focus, nudge him. Ah, this is really interesting. His focus comes back. All right? And after the presentation, what do you do? Run home. Sit with your prospect for the meeting after the meeting. Handle whatever challenges he has, whatever questions he has. Don't push him aside. Now, if you have invited five prospects, you cannot handle all five. You call for backup. Your leaders will come and support you and look after some of your... All right, like most of our meetings in Malaysia, for example, after the meeting, we walk around and we shake hands. The two minutes shaking hands and Muni standing there introducing me to this guy helps. Oh, I met this guy, I met that guy, you know. So it reaffirms their belief in the company and the plan. Right, so how many ways of showing the plan? Number one, one-on-one, -on -one, very, very powerful. Number two, home meetings, extremely powerful, especially those who have restrictions. Housewives say, I can't come out, Patman. Never mind, every, every Saturday evening, run a home meeting in your house. Number three, official venues. Dress professionally. Official venues, you dress with a shirt and tie. Nothing less. And you also advise your prospect to dress alike. Why? You don't want him to feel out of place. So you call him, come for the meeting, uh, it's uh, in uh, Hilton Hotel. 